Hello and welcome to the 2016 TW Steel Inter Enduro Championship. This is round seven. We're at Daytona Sandown Park. We're using the alternate reverse layout for the first time in uh, D-Max history. And it changes also, of course, everything to the circuit. Uh, one of them being the what will now be the last corner as such. It's uh, You come up towards what is now turn seven, which is a, uh, a right-hander. And then it's uh, almost a left-hand hairpin now for that last corner. So uh, if we have two drivers, maybe Bobby Trunley and Luke Cousins right together coming into the last lap, maybe someone like Luke Cousins or Bobby Trunley will throw one down the inside there. Now we're in the championship. Bobby Trunley leads by 57 points over Luke Cousins with Ollie Peacock also in chase. Ollie Peacock won last time out, but effectively this neutralizes things. No one has any kind of form on this layout. So, uh, well, let's go and see what happens then. Let's go to the grid and speak to some of the drivers before the start of the race. I think it'll be quite an interesting race, I think. Uh, we're, uh, I think it's my best qualifying D-Max, actually. Yeah, so... Um, circuit suits you then? I think so. I tend to find I work better on flowing circuits, yeah. So, to uh, thank you, Bobby, to uh, to qualify fourth. I'm pretty happy with that. And identical time to Mr. Trumley, so I'll take that. Yeah, yeah, not bad at all. I definitely had more pace than that. I definitely had more pace. <laughs> Uh, circuit's good. I did the masterclass, so I think everybody else has by the sounds of things as well. Um, the uh, feels a little different to practice last night where it was wet, uh, but I, I, I'm pretty happy with eighth. The uh, it's pretty tight up at the top. I think I'm only a few tenths off pole. Uh, it's good. It's good. It's, 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 it's a bit of an interesting configuration. Uh, curbs are in slightly different places to what you're used to, but um, yeah, it's, it's, it's good fun. It's good fun. Still haven't quite worked out there yet. That's um, that's completely different to how it normally is. But a whole hour of racing, so should be moving forward. Ho hopefully, there's some quick guys behind me, so uh, so we'll see. I mean, the field's really close. Only two, three tenths between the top ten or so, so it's going to be uh, going to be a fast race. I don't know. Um, it's an interesting layout. We make some overtaking spots when we uh, start the race. From ninth, I think. Last car I've got feels okay, but it's still not properly warmed up, so it should what be do you a good think of the race. Configuration. I quite like it. There's not much runoff um, going through the corners. It's not designed to go that way, but it's good. It's interesting. It's a challenge for people, so it'll be an interesting race. We're almost ready to go then for the TW Steel D Max Inter Enduro Championship. This is round seven at Daytona Sandown Park on the alternate reverse layout. So uh, that's why you're seeing the drivers come out what is usually the pit entrance. So they head out the pit, exit onto the track. In qualifying, we had a, a pretty surprise result and a new name, not only to the championship, but also to the front of the order. Tor Ryan put it on pole position. Alongside him will be uh, Ronan McClintock, who is uh, 23rd in the championship. So uh, a good result for him. Row two is Bobby Trunley and Michael Coppin. Richard Lacey and James Perry are row three. Row four is Joseph Ellis and Zana Mahoney. Then it's Luke Cousins, who is second in the championship. He is down in ninth place with uh, Bobby Trunley, the championship leader, up in third. So work to do for him. Alan Curtis will start 10th row. Six is Tom Eastwood and Oliver Peacock, who is third in the championship. Then it's uh, Matthew Conroy and Lawrence Toombs. Stuart Shearman and Andrew Tempest. McCauley Pond and Martin Bork are on row nine. Henry Burdett is alongside me then. And... Uh, was a fairly close qualifier, Henry, but two names towards the front which we weren't expecting to see. And uh, as the 18 carts round the last corner, I wonder what's going to happen at the start because the championship leader, Bobby Trunley, is there on the inside of road two. We're off and racing then for an hour of the uh, round seven of the Inter Enduro Championship. They all get through turn one safely, do they? Yes, they do. Tor Ryan has held on to his lead. McClintock was in second, but there's Bobby Trunley trying to go up the inside. In fourth place is uh, Michael Coffin, and uh, he's now trying to get past the delayed Bobby Trunley as they head through Vale for the first time. Do they all get through safely? Yes, here goes Bobby Trunley then down in towards turn number five. Takes second place away from Rona McClintock, and uh, that's allowing Tor Ryan to uh, escape up the road. But Bobby Trunley then, championship leader, into second. He's now having to defend into turn seven. And frankly, Henry, all 18 cars look like they've got through relatively safely. Cards getting very close. There goes Ollie Peacock. Black flag uh, for Stuart Sherman. And uh, Ollie Peacock was uh, very wide in the number 134 coming out of turn number three. The drivers going through turn five and up towards turn six now. Graves leads by two seconds around the circuit. But uh, coming in towards turn one, there goes the move for second then. As we are on board with Michael Coppin, he went up the inside of Trundley, but Trundley is able to get back at turn two. 
Going through turn three then, Michael Coppin having a look over his shoulder mid-corner and uh, wasn't able to make the move stick. And Bobby Tronley looking over his shoulder, defending into turn seven. Coppins tried the inside a couple of times. He's thinking, why don't I try the outside? Can he get the switch back in towards turn number one? Bobby Tronley defending, having to jump in the seat on board with uh, second place. Is there going to be a move? No. Trying now into turn three. Bobby Trundley's going to come back up the inside. Can he make the move stick? No, it looks like second place has finally changed. Ollie Peacock at the back of this group. Looking through Ollie Peacock's onboard cameras. He heads down top straight. And all you can see is a sea of D-Max cars in front of him. As far as the eye can see. He's on lap number 46. His lead is 14.1 seconds. But Richard Lacey, Henry... While we've been concentrating on uh, the Bobby Trunley battle and Bobby Trunley passed into turn one. That was an attempt from uh, Eastwood. But is he going to lose a place to Cousins again? No. But uh, what I was about to say was that uh, Richard Lacey has been getting very close to the back of Michael Coppin. And only one and a half seconds se separate them now. With uh, just under half an hour to go. Oh, he's, oh just excuse me. He was, uh, Eastwood was... Uh investigating the rear end of Trendley's uh, cart as we went through Vail there but that's where Trendley seems to have his main bout of problems and he's been forced wide at the right hander and now Trendley's on the grass he's uh, grass tracking hand in the air oh and he's dropped right to the back of that pack and um, well are we going to see the championship leader down it well he's down in 12th is he going to pit or can he carry on? Now, Ollie Peacock, Oliver Peacock in number 134, chasing Alan Curtis and James Perry for ninth position. Peacock down 11th and uh, he's not been able to capitalise on Bobby Trundley's first real problematic round of the season. Luke Cousins, Trundley's closest championship rival, He's managed to make it into sixth position in cart 110. Oh, sideways as Ellis almost gets it crossed up. Going in there now, Lacey's going to pounce back on Eastwood. Did he give Tom Eastwood a taste of his old medicine? A couple of laps ago, Eastwood went round the outside of uh, Lacey for that position at Vale. All I'm going to say is I'm glad Eastwood's got a dark race suit on. And here comes number 110, Luke Cousins, and number 120, Ronan McClintock. They are now going to make it two for six drivers battling in the final 90 seconds of this race for second place. Can Coppin hold on? Coppin knows that if he leaves the door open, he's going to get hung out to dry like yesterday's washing. And he comes out to turn number six through the infield section. Oh, he squeezes Joseph Ellis to the inside. Ellis now tries to cross over into the final corner. This is where Ellis is going to try and cut underneath Coppin coming on to the start, finish straight, into turn number one, he's down the inside, how many places is Copping going to lose, at the moment it's when he comes back up the inside, oh, they're three wide into the third corner, down top straight they go, 30 seconds left on the race clock, and it's anyone's guess who's going to take second, Tor Ryan is uh, still leading by a country mile, but now that's Eastwood into third, Eastwood in number 101 has passed Lacey and Ellis. This is the final lap. Tor Ryan is already some way around it. And this battle the second goes into its final lap. Through turn of one for the final time. Copy into turn number three he's got to hold off eastwood they're side by side here comes cousins cousins who's had a shocking race now vying for a place in the top five the checkered flag has gone out all coppins comes through Vale. tall ryan has taken the win but our attention is on the battle going into turn number five as michael coppin and tom eastwood by over the final podium place can coppin defend he's going to squeeze eastwood to the inside Lacey in the red race suit is there. Lacey swings out wide. Lacey's going to dive bomb up the inside of Eastwood. Going in the final corner. How many are going to come out? this side by side. Coppin holds on. And 
They're side by side for third. The timing screen says Eastwood gets the final podium position. Uh, Lacey is fourth. Cousins fifth. Poor Joseph Ellis slips to sixth with McClintock seven. Mahoney in eighth. Perry ninth. And Oliver Peacock rounds out the top ten. Chris, you can take everyone through the rest of the uh, order while I go and have a lie down. Alan Curtis was 11th, Lawrence Toombs was 12th, then it was Bork, Conroy, Tempest, Trunley, Pond and Shearman. But what a fantastic drive from Tor Ryan. He won by 29.1 seconds in the end. Coppin defended absolutely brilliantly. How he held off Lacey, Cousins, Ellis, Eastwood and everyone else for that long, I will never know. But Coppin did an absolutely fantastic job. First time in DMAX this season. Tor Ryan, well done. So now we'll uh, look to the official camera, get onto the top step. Tom, you had a great last couple of laps there. Just talk us through the uh, moves you made to get yourself on the podium. I, I just saw them all bunched up and, and they were all battling, so that enabled me to catch them up. And then, um, and then yeah, it was really close racing. No, brilliant fun. And uh, Richard Lacey, you were side by side with him across the line. Did you know you'd got it? No, no I thought he had it and he thought I had it. It's, it was, you know, millimetres. Oh, brilliant. Brilliant racing. Uh, let's go to Michael next. Michael, how on earth did you manage to keep second there? I know, I'm going to sleep well tonight. Yeah, that was, uh, that was bloody hard work. So, having got past Bob, who's just a nightmare to try and overtake, he, uh, he defends so well. I looked up, I was just saying to Tor, he disappeared. I was like, right, okay, I'm in a race on my own, and that was it after that. I was just, uh, with about five, ten laps to go, I thought, right, hang on a minute, there's a train of about six of them behind me, so I'm just going to have to hold them off, yeah. So, it was a uh, yeah, good race. Yeah, best result in DMAX as well, so pleased with that, yeah. Yeah, certainly, you 11th in championship coming in, so you must be uh, boosted up the order. And well, Tor Ryan, uh, I I asked around, but couldn't couldn't really know where you you had come from. So uh, a surprise to come in and win by 29 seconds. Yeah, definitely. Um, obviously, Bobby, that's the guy I wanted to beat today. Um, been out here practicing with him. Uh, he's obviously very fast. Um, I was hoping for a top five, to be honest. Um, but about 10 laps in, I looked behind. There was a 20 cart lead. I just thought keep doing what I'm doing sure enough it uh, it paid off <laughs> and uh, what, what sort of you know racing have you what's your racing background then uh first time in the champs uh do a bit of open testing and stuff here sprints and practices um do rye house pro cart um but apart from that that's about it so probably in the next round <laughs> to be honest we'd love to have you back well done well done and win if you've enjoyed the racing today at Sandown Park why not join us at the next round to book your place on the grid visit our website or call this number <laughs>